I was making a bed. Good morning. Good morning. I was make, making a bed to myself today to say how many people will come through the, you know, those doors towards the end of the service, <laughs> you know, <laughs> functioning on the old time, <laughs> the old time change. You know, I have to be glad because I was going to do that. And today I had to present and my niece said to me, you're running late. So, of course, I had to run. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I am channeling Burnett, Burnett today. I, if you see on the service, Burnett's name is on the uh, service. For those who do not know me, I am Cruz Ventura. And f forgive me, Burnett, I'm channeling you today. Let there be light, we read in Genesis 1, 3. Let there be light in our minds, in our thoughts, in our plans, present and future, conversations, views of people all the world. And welcome, welcome to Unity Church of Christianity members in the sanctuary or on Zoom. Let us remain open and receptive to all that God is. Let God's light shine through every moment on our day. In our call to worship, let us all stand and sing hymn number 331. Hymn number 331. I am making, I am walking in the light. Our daily word for today is illuminate. And our reader today will be Aquete Letlow. Great morning, church family in the sanctuary, and great morning, church family on Zoom. And before I go into the daily word of Ironically illuminate, I just want to send love and light to the Gillen family of Freeport, New York. Illuminate, I welcome the light. Taking a moment to appreciate the beauty of a sunset, I realize that in another part of the world, the first rays of a rising sun are bringing light to a morning sky. Whether I can see it or not, 
the sun never stops shining. Somewhere, a new day is dawning. Much more brilliantly than the sun, the light of God too is always shining. Sometimes my thoughts may be so focused on a challenging life situation that I do not sense this divine light. Then in a flash of insight, I experience again the illuminating presence that even in my darkest moments is as near as my next thought. I affirm, let there be light. I breathe out frustration and worry. Breathing in, I am filled with the light of truth that illuminates my mind and shines from within my heart. And today's daily, the blessing of today's daily word is from, as Cruz had just mentioned, Genesis chapter one, verse three. Then God said, let there be light. And then there was light. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. To illuminate can be described as a light that shines, bringing into marvelous display all that there is in and outside of us. You all know that I walk, so I call myself a walker. But I do my walking every day. It could be in the community, it could be at the preserve. But I'm always amazed. I marvel at the myriads of colors in structure that are displayed, both in my neighborhood and in nature. The sun, an incredible shining star, shines through, bringing into relief the changes of the trees, bushes, emerging flowers, the activities of the birds, animals, and humans without prejudice. The sun shines on all, warming and illuminating. But do we experience that light, that illumination inside of us as we arrange plans, organize our daily lives, etc.? Yes, Christ within orders and illuminates our lives. But do we live in line with such certainty? In studying Hinduism and Buddhism, not too long ago, we were doing that on, on Zoom. I learned and we learned that Nirvana means heaven and Samsara means er earthly existence. But it's not an actual place, but rather a state of mind. How do you see your life? The author inquires. Your life becomes what you believe it to be. The separation we may feel between God or our divinity is created by our own sense of self and others. If in unity we affirm that we are made in the image and likeness of God, that we each contain, we each contain an innate spark of divinity and are born whole, perfect, complete, why we then berate ourselves, our efforts, or emotions? Reverend Jim Blake of Unity explained that our practice is to become aware of our negative thoughts and see if we can somehow change them into positive ones. For example, proclaim, I release those thoughts that no longer serve me and try to think of the opposite from occurring. Let us go back to the five universal principles in unity and concentrate on the first and the third. The first one explain, explain, God is absolute good in everywhere present. If we take this first principle and continuously affirm our own spark of divinity, knowing that our very essence is of God and is inherently good. The third universal principle affirms that human beings create their experiences by the activity of our thinking. Can we then deduce that our own toils and tribulations oftentimes are created by the, uh, I'm sorry, our own toils and tribulation are created by the activities of our thinking. And therefore, let us not own those chain charges 
and change those thoughts that shape our reality? Does it seem that a door, that every door is closed? Affirm, the light will dawn, whether you are going through financial testing, physical problems, emotional upset, death in the family, response to social or political upheaval. The, law, the Light Will Dawn was written by Reverend Mary Coferly, and he reads as follow. The light will dawn and healing will flow. The light will dawn and supply will flow richly. The light will dawn and peace will reign. The light will dawn and harmony and order will be restored. As you pray with authority and conviction, listen attentively and affirmatively and nothing shall be impossible to you. And now let us affirm, I welcome the light. Again, I welcome the light. Remain seated and let us sing hymn number number six, morning has broken. Hymn number number six, morning has broken. Now let us relax, wake up, <laughs> and next thing, breathe slowly in and out, releasing all concerns. In the affirming prayer, I decided to do an exercise written by author Michael Grunkle. And this is an exercise on the power of self-reflection, okay? to assist us in staying focused on our purpose. So remember, this is an exercise. Am I using my time wisely? I don't want to 
place your hands, because I know we all use our time wisely, right? Am I taking anything for granted? Am I employing a healthy perspective? Am I living true to myself? Am I work, work, waking in the morning ready to take on the day, like today, that we got rushed out of the house because of the changing time? Am I taking care of myself physically? Am I thinking negative thoughts before I sleep? Am I putting enough efforts in my relationships? Am I letting matters that are out of my control stress me out? We are very well known for worrying about things we have no control over it. Am I achieving the goals that I set for myself? And as a manager, Angelou declare, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude about it. Let's face it, if you can't do anything, just change your attitude. Declare as written by Emily Cady, God is the giver of all goods gifts, all God's and goods gifts, life, health, love. Furthermore, in our illumination, we discover that God is not only the giver, but the gift itself, that he is life, health, love in us. Spiritual understanding is the continuous illumination of our truth, an open and firm awareness of our own indwelling divinity, our indwelling Christ. It may take some time for this realization to take root, and we may fluctuate between full recognition, doubt, forgiveness and denial. But as such, the spirit within awaits with open arms for the arrival of the prodigal son. Love, peace, kindness, wonderment, and joy await us. And now, let us stand and sing hymn number 123. Let us stand and sing hymn number 123. Holy light ignite each heart.
Now let's greet each other. Stand, stand, if you need to stand and claim. The answer to how is yes. The answer to how is yes. The answer to how is yes. To how is yes. is yes by all means and now let us welcome our reverend charles the answer to how is yes yes, yes. yes. of course Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, Burnett. <laughs> and thank you, Aquete, for letting your light shine. <sighs> thank you for that exercise. We can all use a little self-reflection. Self-reflection so that true self can come through. We can let go of the lesser and embrace the greater. Anything come to mind that you're holding to? Something that is lesser? Maybe a coworker, maybe a spouse, a family member. Do we see the Christ in that person, that situation, that place? Or are we happy holding on to the lesser? I know you are bigger than that. I claim it for you. You're going to let your light shine. And you're going to be the Christ to that person, place, or situation. You're going to be the eye of the storm, the calm peace of God. You're going to illuminate wherever you go because you know wherever you are, God is, and I am divine. So close your eyes, if you could, and just take a breath. The breath is so important, because it naturally opens our hearts and relaxes our mind. In this simple breath, we let go and we let God. And we allow the truth of our being to shine forth. Every breath you take is a breath of God. As we have often sung, breathe in me breath of God. So now that we are centered in our divinity, awake to all that God is, I ask that we sing out the truth as taught to us by our way shower the Lord's Prayer.
This is our Thanksgiving Day. Quiet your mind and quiet your heart. Be still. Be still your thoughts. Be still your heart. And allow gratitude to fill your heart and mind. Gratitude for all that God is. Gratitude for all the good in your life. Gratitude for the presence and power within. For I am never alone. I am never for lack. The presence and power of God are with me. This morning I realize that power. I realize that presence. I am awake and fully present to all that God is and all that God will ever be because he lives as thee. Today I walk in the peace of God and I see quiet waters before me. The storms have gone, the clouds have lifted and sunshine beams brightly in and through and as me. The light of God illumines my mind and I know what to do, when to do, what needs to be done. I am wise, for I am filled with the wisdom of God. All I needed to do was to be still and let God be God. For the promise of our way shower is, I will send to you a comforter and she will teach you all things anew. Through the comforter, you will release and let go all that is not of God. And the comforter, the Holy Spirit will fill you, fill you to overflowing of the truth of your being. This morning I am filled with gratitude. I am filled with gratitude because I know that I know all that God is, I am. I am filled with gratitude because I know God is in the midst of everything I do. For God is my power, my strength, my life. God is all. All that I think, breathe, feel, say, and do. My God, my God. My heart is filled with gratitude. It overflows with love and I walk in his peace. You see our prayer chest coming forward and our hearts are filled with even more gratitude because before we have even spoken, God has answered our prayers. For the God of our being knows everything that is on our hearts and minds. And it is God's will that we live in perfect joy and peace. So we get ourselves out of the way and we say yes 
to all that God is. We say yes to our answered prayers, to healing, health, and wholeness, abundance, security, understanding, all that God is. We say yes. And we say thank you. For we know that we know each breath we take, the life, love, and wisdom of God will fill us completely. And we will walk in his joy, live in his peace, because God is good. Not some of the time, but all the time. God is good. God is good. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Whew. I'm glad you all made it. I don't know about you, but that hour screwed me up. <laughs> I woke up even extra early. <laughs> it's crazy. I had church on my mind. <laughs> Just instead of letting it happen. But that's the way we operate sometimes. Things get stuck in our brain and we can't let them go. Usually when that happens, I find a new place in my house where I can let it go. If I just lay there in bed, I often feel stuck. I have to get up and move to a new place. And there, I can let it go. So I thank you for joining us an hour early. I thank you, our Zoomers, for waiting or having your breakfast early, <laughs> getting your cup of coffee or your cup of chamo chamomile, or as Uncle Bernie would say, it must be five, five o'clock somewhere. But I thank you for coming out. And I, I don't know if you read the news the other day, but I, I read about this nine-year-old girl who disappeared. And she disappeared after she used her mother's revolutionary new moisturizer which promises to make you 10 years younger. <laughs> but <-dum> -bum. <laughs> you can slap your knees, it's okay. Michael, did you get it? <laughs> she was nine, she's at 10 years younger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's sad, I know, I know. <laughs> But it brings to us in a joyful way to our time of lesson. And as Cruz said, wake up. <laughs> and our lesson this morning is entitled, My, My, My. And for you women out there, I'm not going to sing. Mm -hmm. They're going, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know the song. <laughs> my, my, my. For Psalm 18, verses 1 through, through 2 declares, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the thorn of my salvation, my strength. You see, in God we live, move, and have our being. And closer is he than our breath and nearer than our feet. God is my life, my love, my wisdom, my, my, my. God is my all. Just as Jesus declared in John chapter 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. This morning, what did you declare? 
my body, my aches and pains, my worries. How we use the word my is very important because we use it to show possession or belonging. If you name it, you claim it. My, my, my. Psychology 101 tells us it's perfectly normal for toddlers to believe that everything is mine. As they begin to understand the concept of possession, they also begin to test boundaries and independence. Young toddlers begin to understand that they are separate and apart from others. In unity, we affirm that we are all divinely blessed. And the book of Genesis tells us that we were made in the image and likeness of God. It's our second principle. Humanly, human beings are divinity in expression. We call it the Christ presence within us. Our very essence is of God, and therefore we are inherently good. God is our essence, and yet for so many, we are not fully aware of our divinity, and perhaps even more rare, do we claim our divinity. God is my life, my love, my wisdom. God is my all. Wherever I am, God is, because I am divine. The poet William Wordsmith wrote, our birth is but a sleep and forgetting. The soul that arises with us, our life stars. Our birth is but a sleep and forgetting. But we were made in the image and likeness of God. But we have fallen asleep to the truth that the spirit, life, love, and wisdom of God is within us and around us. God is omnipresent, everywhere present. God is omnipotence, all powerful. God is omnipresence, om omniscience, all knowing. And yet the first thought and feeling that we develop as we are little children is that we're independent and separate from others. We're apart from others. And it's no wonder that we call that period in our life the terrible twos. Because we think we're separate and apart from God. Mine, mine, mine. My pacifier, my toy, my blanket, my stuffed animal, my parents. And just look how all our possessions and all our worldly attachments have exponentially grown through the years. All that growth that we've done since our childhood days Charles Fillmore, he interprets Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 through 24 as will became independent of wisdom and an unbalanced condition was born in our mind and our bodies because our will and our wisdom were separate. We find that man is in this adverse state of mind being temporarily temporarily cut off from his thoughts, feelings, and the real source of his supply. The life principle, the tree of life, man is thus described as being driven from the garden of paradise. You know, like we did this morning, like Cruz had us do, I remember a powerful ex exercise I did a few years ago. I was asked to look back on my life and to journal about my life. Has anyone done, done that? Yeah. And I realized as I looked back on my life, how I could see that that innocent red haired freckled, yep, freckled little boy who many called, what was Ron Howard's name? Opie. I realized how I moved further and further away from my divinity, from that innocent little child. 
And little by little, I moved further and further away from my divine life, love, and wisdom. But when in truth, my divinity was closer than my breath and nearer than my feet. And as many of you, you know, I did not begin to reawaken until a fall retreat, which was all about the Christ within you. But in truth, I had really started to wake up prior to that because I came to church on a regular basis and the seeds of truth were being planted in my consciousness over and over again. I didn't realize the seeds were being planted, but they were. And then on that retreat, they were ripe for harvest. It was all about the Christ within. And then I woke up and the spirit woke me and said, to be still and let God be God. And Jesus is your way shower. But did I wake up fully on that morning? I woke up abruptly, but I did not wake up fully. It was only the beginning of the beginning. You see, this past week, I was reading a book and the book was entitled, How to Pray to God Without Speaking. Excuse me, How to Pray Without Talking to God. It's by Reverend Linda Martella Witsit. And she shared a, a story, a story about, <coughs> excuse me, a story about the Golden Buddha. You see, it was in the 50s, it was in the 50s that this, uh, these monks learned that they were gonna build a, a highway, a street right through their community, right where they had this humongous clay statue of the Buddha. And so they organized and they got a crane and the crane went to lift the Buddha, but it wasn't big enough. And it lifted it up and the Buddha cracked a little bit. So they had to get a bigger crane. And that night it rained and one of the monks came out with a lantern to check on Buddha. And he noticed as the light shined through the crack, there was a, a reflection, a bright reflection. And he took his chisel out and he chis chiseled away at the Buddha. And he was amazed what he found. And he went and got all his fellow monks and together they started to pry away all the, the clay and underneath the clay, they found a brilliant, pure gold statue of Buddha, concealed by all the clay. And this is what we do. We do the same thing. Because the monks had realized that during the war, the other monks had concealed the golden Buddha with clay to protect it to conceal it from war so no one would steal it. And we do the same. We are caught up in all our external identity and attachments, my car, my house, my family, my church. And we do all this, but in essence, we conceal the gold, golden Buddha, the Christ within us, with all our external thoughts, feelings, and attachments. Charles Fillmore tells us, we are all in our personalities wearing the masks that conceals the real, the spiritual, the I am. I did that for 41 years and I'm still chiseling away to let go, to let God be God and to let go of all my worldly attachments. For 41 years, I built up my attachments and then beyond, I, I continued to build up some attachments but I had to let many, many things go. And in between, there was much angst. And in some cases, I was pissed off because things that I thought were entitled to me, I did not get. But I had to realize that they were just worldly attachments and I had to let them go so that I could fully express that golden Buddha, that Christ within me. As Jesus once declared, I am in this world, but I am not of this world. 
In Mark chapter 10, verse 24 through 31, Jesus said to his disciples, how hard is it for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? And Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it's easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples, they were astonished. Then who in the world can be saved, they, they replied. And Jesus looked at them intently and he said, humanly, it's impossible, but not with God, for everything is possible with God. Then Peter, faith, began to speak. We've given up everything to follow you. And Jesus replied, I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brother or sister or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and property along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life, but many who are the greatest now will be least important then. And those who seem important now will be the greatest then. You see, it's okay to have nice things, but the nice things, my house, my family, my job, they become more important than my awareness of my faith, love, joy, peace, and wisdom of God. Like the beautiful child of God who declares, mine, 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 we are all re reinforcing our separation from God and more intently, and more intent on removing, excuse me, we are more intent on reinforcing our separation of God when we should be more intent on removing all the barriers that keep us from the God of our being. Just as Rumi once said, our job is not to become lo more loving, but to, rem to remove all the barriers that keep us from loving. As Cruz did this morning, she took us through an exercise where we could identify some of those barriers. Or maybe you could do a self-reflection like I did many years ago, where you can see that we put many, many barriers around us. Perhaps we lost that love one time in our childhood. That, that childhood in sixth grade where you came to school and there was a love note in your, in your desk saying, I wanna go out with you. And you were on seventh heaven. And the next day you came into, into school and you had another love note. I want to break up with you. <laughs> Tell me your heart was not broken. And you put a barrier upon your heart in that very moment. You see, we all place barriers, whether they're in love or in the abundance of God, and we need to remove them. We must realize that Jesus is telling us the road is wide, but the door is narrow. And when we, it's all said and done, when we come before Jesus, he will say, I don't know you. Leave this place because we place this in the outer more important than that which is within us. So we must realize that everything we call good in this world is just temporary. Only God is real. Only God. You know, last Sunday, Sarah and I, we, we visited Uncle Les in a rehab center in Brooklyn. Uncle, Uncle Les is 93 years old. And when we got there, he wasn't in his usual place in the, in the hall, in his wheelchair. They said he had slipped out of his wheelchair and they put him in his bed early. It's like four o'clock and we got there and Uncle Les was not responsive. We shook him, we touched him, we, we said, Uncle Les, wake up, wake up. And he was not responsive. 
And then as we're sitting there, you know, I prayed. But I didn't pray for his healing. I prayed for whatever's best for Uncle Les. And next to Uncle Les in the same room was a, a man sitting there in his bed watching a hockey game, an afternoon hockey game on Sunday. And there was like four announcers and a lot to do. And it came to me that that hockey game was meaningless. All the to-do in the outer was meaningless. What was real was right in front of me, Uncle Les, and what he was experiencing. Not all the nonsense in the outside. So the good thing is Sarah had the, the state of mind to say, get an ambulance and take him to the hospital. And they took him and, and they gave him IVs and they did CAT scans and everything was fine. But he, what was really happening was he was totally dehydrated. And at the hospital, he could get the care that he needed. And then the next day, it was back to Uncle Les. But I had the same feeling during the week. Like Cruz, I like to walk. And I was walking around Hempstead Lake. And as I was finishing up my walk, I come around where you can see Southern State Parkway. And I saw hundreds of cars stuck in traffic. And I thought, what are these people thinking? What are they doing as they're stuck in traffic? Are they stuck in their consciousness of all the things in the outer and all their feelings? And are they asleep like a child of God of their divinity? We spend so much time going and coming from work and doing all these things in the outer and we simply fall asleep at the wheel. I've told you many, many times, what's the number one accident on the roads? Rear ending people. And how do you rear end someone when you're awake? It just tells you that so many of us are asleep in our thoughts and in our feelings and we're not fully present to the presence. But let's be honest. It's not just the rich man who can get stuck. The poor man can get stuck just as easily. The poor man, which is the lowest of lows, and we call it the victim consciousness. Ever been there? My achy body, my poor health, my poor finances, my, 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 just fill in the blank. But instead of saying my, 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 what we need to do is to take a, a moment of heartfelt prayer and ask why, why, why? We ask why until the divine wisdom within us reveals that we're only stuck in our own stinking thinking and feeling which has brought us out of alignment with our divinity. Our own separate thoughts and feelings which have concealed the golden Buddha, the Christ within us and around us. All our my, my, my's are more than challenges. Our my, my, my's are opportunities. They're golden opportunities to let go and let be still and to be still and let God be God in our life. We are halfway through Lent, and it's not too late to take a time for self-examination. Self-examination of all our my, my, my's. The my, my, my's that hold us in victim consciousness, or the my, my, my's that illuminate our consciousness and show us the way. But please, when you do this time of self-awareness, please don't do it alone. For Jesus says, of myself, I can do nothing. It is the Christ within me that I can do all things. It is of myself, I do nothing, but it is through and in and through and as the Christ that we can do all things. So I ask you right now, right here, why not take a moment and to be still. 
just close your eyes and let God be God. And then as we close our eyes, we can declare like Charles Fillmore, I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed spirit, and in thy divine wisdom, now erase my mortal limitations. And from thy pure substance of love, bring into manifestation my world according to thy perfect law. For as the psalmist declared, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. For in God we live and move and have our being, and closer is he than our breath and nearer than our feet. For God is my life, my love, my wisdom. God is my all. And so it is. Amen. Amen. And now that you're fully illumined, <laughs> why don't you open your hymns to 114, where we can sing out the truth, sunlight.
Thank you, Michael. In 2023, we are setting ourselves free. Amen. So now it's time to set your wallets free. <laughs> it's another joke. The minister says we have everything we need, everything we need to sustain this ministry, but it's in your pocket. <laughs> so we take our love offerings and we hold it upon our hearts. And together we affirm divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Come on down. Well, you just tempted me. Want me to tell you a joke? Um, this is since he met, he 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 tempted me. Um, uh, it was, it's actually a little one I heard in response about actually a little kid. Um, I heard that the police were called to a daycare center because a three-year-old was resisting arrest. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, uh, the events Saturday, March 18th at 10 a.m. on Zoom, we'll do, we're doing the 12 Powers of Man by Charles Fillmore. Read chapters one and two when we'll discuss it. And the idea and pass code is uh, in the bulletin, or, and it will be sent out. Sunday, March 19th, birthday, fel that's next week, birthday fellowship Sunday, also bring a friend. Um, the outreach ministry is still collecting items for their ba uh, Easter baskets for some of our in uh, homebound um, members. And there's a list in the activity center if you want to um, bring in someone. Now just put your name so that we know what you're bringing. And that would be due by March 26th. Thursday, March 23rd at 11 a.m., the book discussion selection is reading Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. And everybody's welcome to join. Sunday, March 26th, after service, for those interested, there will be a very brief 15-minute session on recognizing signs and uh, symptoms of a heart attack versus stroke, in addition to use of an AED. And it, we're really trying to hold it to about 15, 20 minutes. And I also want to thank you for everybody um, for your ongoing donations for the eyewear because the, um, the frames are refurbished and then the lenses are replaced with, um, with new prescriptions for those in need. Thank you very much for, on for keep doing that. Thank you, Ellen. Terrible twos, terrible threes. Ay, ay, ay. One more thing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Vivian, could you sneak up here for something as per Mr. Hinton? Okay. I know it was good and I know we'll be better from it, whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe it's time for a, another little joke. <laughs> 
top three situations that require a witness. Crimes, accidents, and marriages. <laughs> okay, I know I'm going to pay for that one. <laughs> uh, now we can close out this service, thank God, <laughs> which never really ends by blessing our love offerings and singing a peace song followed by the prayer of protection. Freely, freely I have received, freely, freely I give. Divine love through me blesses all that I have, all that I give and receive. Of you, the giver of these gifts, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. For this ministry is built and sustained by your free love offerings. But most of all, we say thank you, God, for we know all good gifts come in and through and as us because of the power of God. And for this, we are grateful. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now with our big kids, we can sing the peace song. affirm the truth of our being. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. And the presence of God watches over us, for I am presence. For wherever we are, God is and all is well for I am divine. And as you leave this place and you go out, go out into this world, let me remind you, perhaps when you see something pretty, or maybe you feel a little down, just take that moment before you get attached to those feelings. Take that moment and, and why not declare, my, 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 God is good. When? All the time. Why? Because I am divine. And so it is. You can get a hug. You can join us for a circle. Or you can go for brunch. <laughs> I had a joke that you're going to ask me.
no repercussions. <laughs> Three top situations that require one. Hi, Bob and Marie. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Karen, how are you? Yeah, they're, they're, they're coming back to you. And Arthur, good morning, Arthur. 